You. You have reached Young at Heart, where everyone is welcomed. I'm Paulist Father James DeLucio, offering nursery rhymes, stories, songs, poems, mother goose rhymes, Aesop's fables, and nonsense to keep us young at heart, filled with fervor for life, vivacity, and fun, because it's needed in this crazy world of ours. Today I have a number of Mother Goose rhymes and some riddles, but today I'm not going to keep you waiting. I shall offer the solutions to the riddles after I have read them and not keep you waiting for another episode. Because when I was at prayer this very morning, something told me to be especially kind and so, you are the beneficiaries. Here we go. Oh, a vocabulary word. Shod, S-H-O-D. We don't use it very often, but it's still a good word. It has lots of connotations. Are you shod today? Shod. Are you wearing your sandals? Have you slipped your foot into a shoe? Then you are shod, my dear friends. Shod are you. We also refer to the horses when they have those horseshoes nailed to them. They are also shod. And now you are fully prepared to hear our first nursery rhyme. Oh, my page. Ah, here we are. I had a little hobby horse. It was well shod. It carried me to London, nidity nod. And when we got to London, we heard a great shout. Down fell my hobby horse, and I cried out, Up again, hobby horse, if thou be a beast. When we get to our town, we shall have a feast. And if there is but little, why, thou shalt have some. And we shall dance to bagpipes and the beating of the drum. To make merry in adversity is the theme of that wonderful little poem. Did you have a hobby horse? Now, traditionally, they were, there was a name coined for a costume in pageants in the 17th century, you know, again, the time of Shakespeare and well beyond in that century. You know, and we've seen them in pageants and Renaissance fairs where the actor or actress would uh, be, the, uh, be a body, would slip on the body of the horse and then the head of the horse would be in front of them. So the actor or actress would be seen from the waist up and then there'd be the gown-like, that would be the horse body and the, and the head, and it would seem that they were riding a horse, depending on what was uh, embroidered or painted on the uh, cloth that covered their groins and legs. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, but our hobby horses were a horse's head on a stick. Some of them had bells to ring while we were bouncing about. I had one. Did you? They were fun. And we could really imagine going to many, many different places. Where did your hobby horse take you? Now, here's a variation. You know I love variations. They just give us new insights into the same theme, but with a little more, uh, a few more details that are fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, fun. I had a little hobby horse, and it was well shod. It carried me to the miller's door, trod, trod, trod. When I got there, I gave a great shout, and down came the hobby horse, and I cried out, Fie upon you, miller! He was a great beast. He would not come to my house, though I made a little feast. 
I had but very little, but I would give him some for playing of his bagpipes and beating on his drum. Ah, this one adds another dimension, does it not? Indeed, how often as children do we plead with the adults to come and play? And they do not. And sadly, we go off with our hobby horse or we beat our own drum. And that's what we have to learn as adults too. If someone isn't ready for fun or kindness, we go and create our own and find those with whom we may dance about and prance about and sing our songs. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one's fun. Poddly poddly, puddle and frogs. That's a mouthful. Hoddly poddly, puddle and frogs. Cats are to marry the poodle dogs. Cats in blue jackets and dogs in red hats. I wonder what will become of the mice and the rats. Here's a riddle. Hoddy doddy with a round black body, three feet and a wooden hat. Pray tell me, what is that? Okay, you didn't get your thinking cap on yet or your sorting hat if you're a Harry Potter fan. Hotty dotty with a round black body, three feet and a wooden hat. Pray, tell me, what is that? This one we're very unlikely to know because it's an item that would be found in a home long, long ago. It's a three-legged iron cooking pot with a wooden lid. And it was very popular among what were then called the gypsies in their encampments. But now we've been asked to call them the Romans. Yeah, as in ancient Rome, but different Romans. Okay. And Hadi Dadi was also an inspiration for Humpty Dumpty, but we've already read that one. Okay, here we have another fun little rhyme. Oh, and maybe this is something you make at home. I would never have guessed. Hokey pokey, whiskey thumb. How do you like your potatoes done? Boiled in whiskey? Boiled in rum? All says the king of the cannibal islands. Well, there's a longer poem about the king of the cannibal islands, but I'm not going to read it because it may have been fine in its day, but I find it even too racist to even begin to share, even in a context. So we're going to leave that alone. But I thought the boiled potatoes in whiskey or broiled in rum might be something you'd like to try someday when no children are present. Okay. Okay. Here we have, back to being shod. Shoe a little horse, shoe a little mare, but please let the little colt go bear, bear, bear. Yes, and one could tickle a baby's feet. Now there was an interesting article yesterday in the New York Times about the danger of tickling. That times parents think that the child is having a great time because they're laughing, 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 but they could actually be in pain. But the, the Pavlov response to tickling is a laughter, but it's not fun. So if you're going to play tickle with a little child, first always ask, and then make sure you just do it very lightly. Don't, even if they're laughing hard and hard, then you withdraw you're tickling their feet. And then if they say please again, then a little bit, but not too much. So 
We're learning so much in this 21st century. It's, it's phenomenal. It's a phenomenon, but it's a good thing that we keep learning. And ask some of your adult children, for you who are older, if they enjoyed the tickling or not. You might be surprised what you hear. Sometimes what we intend is not how it is perceived by another. Mm -hmm. Riddle. 30 white horses upon a red hill. Now they tramp, now they champ, now they stand still. Now that's a very popular riddle and I'm sure you know the answer to that one. One more time. 30 white horses upon a red hill. Now they tramp, now they champ, now they stand still. And here is a correlative riddle. Answer is somewhat like the first to the first but slightly with a slight variation. You know I love variations. Okay. Four and twenty white bulls sate upon a stall. Forth came the red bull and licked them all. Four and twenty white bulls sate upon a stall. Forth came the red bull and licked them all. Hint for number one. Hint for number two. Did I not give you a hint? The first, of course, is our teeth and gums. 30 white horses upon a red hill. Now they tramp, now they champ, now they stand still. The second, of course, are teeth and tongue. The red bull. I count around and licked them all. I got to the dentist yesterday. My dentist was in his whole office, Dr. Bashar here in New York City. He and his great team, Luba and Jen and Linda, they took such precautions. There's like 15 minutes between one patient and the next and they fumigate the place and wipe down the, uh, the chairs, you know, that you sit in, those reclining chairs. And when we were finished, and then everyone wears masks, and you have to wear a mask until, of course, it's time for them to check your teeth or clean your teeth. Um, and then when I was leaving, Jen used a kind of, it looked like a hair dryer, but bigger. And it went all over me to, I guess there was something in it. Maybe it was Lysol. I don't know what it was, to be honest. But I felt germ-free upon my exit, which was all their care. So if you're in New York and looking for a dentist, try Dr. Bashar, B-E-S-H-A-R. You can look him up on Google or one of those lesser search engines like Microsoft Edge or Safari or something else, as is your want. Another riddle, a house full, a hole full, and you cannot gather a bowl full. All right? Did you have your thinking cap on? A house full? A hole full? But you cannot gather a bowl full. The answer is smoke. Try to catch a bowl of smoke, will you? You could also have answered mist. That's acceptable. Fog, because you really wouldn't find fog in your house. But if you answered fog, I'll accept it because I vowed to be kind today. All oh, right. The last riddle. Again, now this goes back to 1600. So put yourself in that time frame, not in today. The, clue, the hint here is don't put yourself in a city when you're thinking of your answer to this 1600 riddle. Higher than a house, higher than a tree. Oh, whatever can that be? 
Mm. Well, it's a star in the sky. And do remember that stars are fire and carbon. And carbon is one of the most essential, fundamental elements of all creation. It's even in us. So you are made of stardust. Remember that. I've said it before, but I say it again. And thank you so much for being with me today. Meanwhile, until next time, stay safe, wear your masks. If you go out, be healthy, stay healthy, and take those blessings that are showered upon us every day to keep us young at heart. Bye, everyone.